Welcome to Stable Sort. On this episode, we're going to discuss the famous 01 knapsack problem. We'll develop a dynamic programming solution for it and explain why it runs in pseudo polynomial time, which makes it a weekly NP complete problem. Given a set of items that each have a value and a weight, determine which of those items to select so as to maximize the total value, constrained by knapsack's capacity. This is not some esoteric computer science problem that has no practical real-world applications. For example, you may want to break into somebody's house and take as much of their valuable stuff as possible, but there's only so much that you can take in your knapsack. A reasonable approach may be to sort the items by their value to weight ratio and keep taking the ones that have the best ratio. But this does not guarantee the most optimal solution because some of Knapsap's capacity may not get utilized. Here's a simple example. Suppose Knapsap's capacity is 10 kilograms and there are these three items to choose from. The best value to weight ratio in this example is given by the first item. 88 over 8 is 11. So if it's picked, we'll get a value of 88, but no other items could fit along with it, leaving the remaining 2 kg of capacity unutilized. On the other hand, if we were to take the other two items, both of which could fit, their combined value of 90 would be greater. So picking the optimal combination of items to maximize the total volume is the challenge here. The algorithm should output either 1 or 0 depending on whether the item is picked or not picked. And by the way, this is why this formulation of the problem is called 0-1 knapsack, because you have to either pick it or not pick it, and fractional solutions are not allowed. For example, if we have three items, an output of 0, 0, 0 would mean that no items are picked. An output of 1, 0, 0 would mean that only the first item is picked, 0, 1, 0 would mean that only the second item is picked, and so on. You could see that with n items, there are 2 to the power of n possible outputs. So considering each one would result in an exponential running time and you'll never be able to leave the house before the cops show up. But here's the key to solving the problem faster. Suppose a magic oracle tells you that in an optimal solution, item X fits inside the knapsack. If item X weighs 5 kilograms, then you can solve the problem by pretending that knapsack's capacity is 5 kilograms less than what it actually is and don't bother including item X in calculations at all. This new problem is slightly simpler because there are fewer items to consider. Then at the very end, just remember to put item X into the knapsack and you know that it'll fit since you had five kilograms reserved from its capacity. This observation leads to solving the problem either top down recursively or bottom up using dynamic programming. Let's consider the dynamic programming approach where we progressively solve for larger and larger knapsack capacities. We can represent n items via two arrays, v and w, that contain values and weights, and bags maximum weight capacity, w max. Let's construct a table of size w max plus 1 by n plus 1. We'll call it table t. Each column in our table holds incrementally larger and larger knapsack capacity while each row brings in an additional item to be included in the calculation. The first row of the table will initialize with zeros. The rest of the table will fill out using this pseudocode. Let's walk through a few examples to make it clear how it works. Start at row with item 1, which has a weight of 5. It can't fit into a knapsack of capacity 0, so we fill the cell with the value from the row above which is 0. It also can't fit if the capacity equals 1, 2, 3, or 4. So we keep copying the zeros from the row above. But once the capacity is at least 5, we can fit this item. Thus, we evaluate the max statement. The value from the row above is 0 versus value of item 1, which is 10, plus the value from the row above shifted to the left by the used up capacity of the item. The value in that cell is zero in this case. 
so we saved off the total of 10. It also fits if the capacity is 6 or more, so we repeat steps and write 10 into the rest of the cells of this row. For the following row, we have an item of weight 4. Since we can't fit it into the bag of capacity less than 4, we take the value from the previous row, which happened to be all zeros. But at capacity 4, we can finally fit this item, so again we evaluate the max statement. Should we not include this item and just take the value calculated for this capacity up to this point, which is the cell above, or should we include item 2 along with previously calculated value from the previous row without the capacity taken up by item 2? This would be value of 0 plus 40. Taking the max of the two answers, we save off 40. Moving on, we'll be taking the max of the cell above with value 10 versus 40 plus value from column 1, row n1. 40 is greater than 10, so we write in 40. The same calculation holds true all the way till knapsap capacity is 9, at which point we can fit both of the items. Here, our formula compares the value of the cell above versus 40 plus 10. When the algorithm completes filling out the table, the bottom right corner will contain the maximum value that could be fitted. Okay, so now how do we retrieve the actual set of items that were picked? For that, we'll need an additional two-dimensional boolean array that simply keeps track of if an item is used or not. We make a minor change to our pseudocode, populating this additional table. To read it out, we start at the bottom rightmost cell. If the value is 1, we output 1. Then, we subtract the capacity taken up by the item in the current row and check the previous row. If we have n items and knapsap's capacity is wmax, then the running time of this algorithm is order n multiplied by wmax. This seems like a polynomial term algorithm, since all we're doing is filling out a two-dimensional table. Yet, 0-1 knapsap problem is NP complete. Did we just find a polynomial algorithm for an NP complete problem? Well, not quite. The running time refers to the size of the input, which in our case are n items stored in an array of length n, as well as the knapsap's capacity, wmax. But wmax is not stored in any sort of an array, it's just a number. So to multiply the two together, we need to convert wmax into the same kind of a metric. We could do that by representing wmax in terms of number of digits it takes to encode it. You can think of it as an array that contains each digit of wmax. The length of this array would be log of wmax using whatever the base you used for your encoding. Call it base b. Then, Solving for wmax and plugging the answer into the formula gives us a running time of order n multiplied by b to the power of w size. Since this formulation of the running time has an exponential component, the algorithm is pseudo-polynomial, which makes this problem weakly np-complete. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, and considering breaking into my own house, please don't take the laptop because I needed to make more videos. Instead, fill out a two-dimensional array and follow the algorithm. By the way, my wife keeps all the jewelry in the bedroom dresser. They're in the top shelf, right where all the underwear and socks are.